welcome learners uh, today we are going to learn about pharmaceutical aerosols disclaimer for this video this presentation made for education purpose only and not meant for any commercial interest the information provided in in the presentation by the presenter is taken from his own personal experiences and understanding and from the references quoted at the end of presentation introduction of aerosols uh, aerosols or pressurized package is defined as a system that depends on the power <coughs> depend that the power of composed gas or liquefied gas to expel the constraint from the container now the pharmaceutical aerosols are also defined as a product containing active ingredient dissolved suspended or emulsified in a propellant or a mixture of solvent and propellant means it is a completely a mixture of solvent and propellant with a drug these in inten, <coughs> these are generally intended for oral and topical administration generally into the eyes nose ear rectum and vagina now let us look at advantages of aerosols now firstly over the other formulations the aerosols have some good advantages the first one a dose can be removed with an contamin uh, contamination of material secondly stability is enhanced uh, we can also maintain the sterility in aerosols the medications can be delivered directly to the affected area we can also call it as a localized action shown by the aerosols then ease and convenience of application application of medications in thin layer then rapid and rapid response of medicaments and lastly they also bypass the first pass effect now let us look at the some disadvantages of aerosols over other formulations first uh, these are mostly expensive because of uh, containers and the system of aerosols then secondly chlorofluorocarbons these are generally used as a propellant propellants and cause a over ozone layer depletion then inflammability means they are highly flammable in case they are catch fire very easily then the toxicity these uh, whatever the propellants are used they are mostly a toxic for internal use and lastly these are widely explosive now let us look at the different components of the aerosol aerosols are composed of a propellant then we will require a system of container to fill that propellant then wall an actuator for the actual delivery of uh, aerosol content and lastly product concentrate whatever the product we are uh, preparing with concentrate we will require for the uh, preparation of aerosols uh, this is a general assembly which is consist of actuator valves uh, then there is a phenomenon of development of certain vapor pressure uh, that can able to squeeze out the content from the uh, aerosol container that we will look at uh, later words in the, in the same presentation now firstly we will look the first component of the aerosol that is propellant uh, which is having actually responsible for developing proper pressure within the container so that the material from the container can squeeze out easily uh, it will also provide the driving force to expel the product from the container and there are two types of uh, propellant first is a liquefied gas propellant and compressed gas propellants now let us look at the now let us look at the liquefied gas propellants now liquefied gas propellants are gases that exist as a liquid under pressure means these are generally a gases in a, a liquefied state uh, because of the propellant exists mainly in the liquid but it will also be in the headspace of a gas and the product is scale up as the valve is open and the sum of liquid of propellant turns out of the gas uh, turns to the gas and keeps the head space full of the gas in this way the pressure remains essential constant and the spray performance maintained throughout the uh, throughout the life of the aerosol is maintained then the examples of some uh, propellant that is uh, chlorofluorocarbon it has certain advantages chemical inertness uh, they are generally having lack of toxicity no uh, flammability then lack of explosiveness but they are having some disadvantages like high cost it depletes the ozone layer now there are certain examples of chlorofluorocarbons uh, trichloro 
<coughs> monofluoromethyl it is also called as a propellant 11 then dichloro difluoromethyl it is called as a propellant 12 and dichloro tetrafluoro ethane which is called as a propellant 114 now hydrocarbons are also used as a propellants can be used for the water based aerosol and topical use in that case we can use hydrocarbon propellants its advantage they are inexpensive excellent solvent and it does not cause any ozone depletion like a chlorofluorocarbon and its disadvantage is a inflammable they are generally inflammable and unknown toxicity is produced by these hydrocarbons examples are propane isobutane and butane we also call them as a propellant a108 propellant a31 and last is a propellant a17 now hydro fluorocarbon and hydrochlorofluorocarbons are also used as a propellants these compound break down in a atmosphere at a faster rate than chlorofluorocarbons and uh, lower ozone destroying effect they are generally producing its advantage they are low inhalation toxicity uh, toxicity sorry uh, high chemical stability high purity and not ozone layer depleting these are the advantages there are certain disadvantages like poor solvent high cost is a disadvantage of these uh, <coughs> then containers containers use in a aerosols they must be able to withstand the pressure as high as 140 to 180 psig that is pounds per square inch gauge at 130 degree of, of fahrenheit now aerosol containers are made up of two types they are either of metal or glass containers Metal container is again of three types, steel plated, steel container, aluminium and stainless steel uh, containers and glass containers generally uncoated glass and plastic coated glass containers are also available in the market. Now these are the two types, metal containers and glass containers. Now the valves used in a aerosols, easy, uh, these are the valves uh, we have looked in, in a picture what is the role of these valves in a aerosols now the aerosol they are generally used to easy to open and close uh, they are having capability uh, capacity to of delivering the content in the desired form such as a spray foam solid stream etc it can deliver a given amount of medicament and types of valve continuous spray uh, there are two types of valves uh, generally valves whatever the valves we are using uh, in a aerosols, there are two types continuous spray valves and metering valves. Now we will see in detail valve assembly and the parts of valve present in a aerosols. The first part is called as actuator, which is actually responsible for um, delivering the content of aerosols. Then, second one is a mounting cup over which the actuator is fitted. Then, stem, stem gasket, spring, body, and deep tube. These are the uh, specific. Uh, we can say assembly of a wall now we'll sorry okay made from the tin plate steel and a1 brass underside the wall cup is coated with a single or double uh, epoxy or vinyl resin then wall body or housing which is made up of nylon and derby and contains opening at the point of attachment of deep tube which is around 0 0.0132 0 0.080 inch then stem which is made up of nylon and derlin brass and stainless steel can also be used and it generally have a ori orifice of 0 0.013 to 0 0.030 inch now gasket uh, neoprene rubber which is measure of major lead neoprene and then spring and deep tube deep tube made up of polyethylene poly uh, propylene then its inner diameter is one point sorry 0 0.120 to 0 0.125 inch however the capillary dye tube in her diameter is 0 0.050 inch and the high viscous product we generally require 0 0.195 inch now next uh, in that second type of walls metering walls these are the different kinds of metering walls they generally we call them as a meter dose inhalers or metering walls generally they are used for dispensing of potent medicament then operates on the principle of the chamber whose size determines the amount of medicament dispensed at a one one actuation 
then approximately 50 to 150 ml plus or minus 10 percent of liquid material can be dispensed at a once at a one time with the use of such a valves now actuators what is the use of actuator these are specially designed buttons which helps in delivering the drug in desired form that is spray wet stream and foam and uh, solid stream means different kind of spray patterns we can uh, attain by using the actuator and there are different types of actuators that are spray actuator foam actuators uh, solid stream actuators and special actuators now spray actuators it can be used for the topical preparation such as antiseptics local anesthetics and uh, spray on the on the bandages then it allows the stream of product concentrate and propellant to pass through the various openings and dispense as a spray then foam actuators it consists of large orifice which ranges from uh, 0.070 to 0.125 inch uh, which are uh, nowadays we are looking at in a shaving foams these type of actuators are called as a foam actuators and then solid stream actuators these actuators are required for the dispensing semi solid product such as a ointments now uh, we will see in detail about metal dose inhalers um, metal dose inhalers used to minimize the number of administration errors to improve the drug delivery of aerosolized particle into a nasal passageway and the respiratory tract. Advantages of uh, MDIs that is uh, it delivers specific amount of dose then they are portable and compact uh, also quick to use no contamination of product dose to dose uh, reproducibility is high there are certain disadvantage of MDIs low drug deposition high pharyngeal deposition is also possible in case of MDIs then coordination of MDIs at uh, actuation and patient inhalation is needed in the case of metal dose inhaler these are the marketedly used some examples of metal dose inhaler and now we will look different marketed uh, metal dose inhaler available in the markets the brand name first one is a fluent discus that is uh, fluticasone is used for the asthma adavir that is fluticasone and salmeterol which is also used for asthma uh, aerobid then it is a phenisolidine which is used for the asthma only then qr that is beclomethasone again used for the asthma and proventive albuterol uh, generally used for the bronchospasm means metal dose inhaler mostly used for the asthma or uh, bronchospasm kind of diseases this is all about the aerosols used uh, in pharmaceuticals. Thank you.